So I teach in USC, and I love it, you know, um, and I keep learning how to do it, meaning, you know, I touch base and check in with, like, I read what, you know, Wiggles is writing about, you know, his philosophy on hip-hop, because there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in terms of, you know, claiming the word again. There's some that teach by going, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, and everybody has their own sort of philosophy, and I know we have to hold it, and there are rules, and you want to teach a style correctly, but I guess the way I'm looking at it is I'm more saying I'm teaching you street dance culture as opposed to hip hop dance because a hip hop dance is, uh, for me hip hop is more of a culture than a dance style. Because like what is a hip hop dance style? Could it maybe only be breaking because if you're getting specific then that's what it was for the culture at that time. But is that what we think of it as now? Do we not include the funk styles of popping and locking? And if we do include them, do we stop there? Uh, do we not, is house a street dance style or is it, but is it not part of hip hop? You know, there's these, these sort of discussions going on. And so for me it's always been the pop and locking breaking have been the roots of it all. But I love old dance, so I talk about the street dance culture as uh, there's a hip hop culture <clears throat> which brings in many facets of code of dress, not just the those four elements that people used to say. Looking at that, I put together a curriculum at USC uh, and in that I, I go through, I of course let them know about the boogaloos, the lockers, uh, rock steady crew. Um, the movements happening that happened in the Bay Area when the Boogaloos were happening in Fresno, all kind of pull in from things. And some people might say some people bit people and whatever it might be called in different instances. But you can see, I think, the influence of the Berry brothers and the Nicholas brothers, their athleticism, how it affected that attack on, um, on you know, B-boys and, and how uh, Cab Calloway with his character, you know, that we should celebrate all these things and not say just this happened but knowing that yes the like your boogaloos from the mid to late 70s into the early 80s they they rocked that they made that thing happen they created boogaloo sam that you know don don camelot created this thing and codified a style um and that the you know the rock city crew and new york city breakers and what they were doing uh but also embracing you know because you go back you can see footage back to you know, 1892 when you see what's called that, that clip of, it's called Three Men Dancing. You see three uh, black guys sort of in a circle, almost doing a bit of a cipher, and then they drop down to like a coin drop kind of. Like you see, again, it didn't become boom, and really codified in top rock, up rock, breaking, you know, and there's no question that it became this thing. Uh, but just celebrating that, you know, th that there's pieces back. So when I teach, I make, I do, I work to have them, you know, I, I send it to like Mr. Wiggle's site for, for background. I talk about these groups that are part of the funk styles. I talk about then in the 80s how music changed and the electro music then gave birth to styles like house and then animation came in strong because DJs came in and funk bands were no longer the game. So I try and give it all. My goal there is to encourage people to dance the way that I remember it. So I just send them to all these areas and just look to get them, to get find that, that vibrancy, that spirit of that dance that will get them a woo. And then I, you know, of course they're there for a term. I have them for quite a while. It's like, you know, 16 weeks. It is a fair length. But you know, they're there, they're, some of them are serious, some of them are just taking it, some like it. So I'm, I'm looking to cultivate that, that philosophy of you're not here to learn routines. I'm gonna show you some routines, but I'm really trying to get you to learn how to freestyle. I'm really trying to get you to love the dance, find ways to, to, as you're learning it, which is what happened to me, as you're learning it, you're being in a, put in a position to have to do it. So it's like you're just barely learning how to do some stuff and then you gotta get in a cipher and try some stuff and then you mess up stuff and you get back and train some stuff and you come back. And get them in that place. You know, I'm proud to say like it's the most popular class they have right now in that, in that department. Uh, we have to turn people away. Um, this is my third term there at USC and uh, they've been very gracious. I've had to miss numbers of classes because of my other obligations and they are 
allowing me to build a program with other Groovaloos and other members uh, to keep the, the styles uh, authentic as I can um, and allow me to continue to do my other stuff as well and allow me to build this program there. So it's great. You know, that's one thing that's kind of shifted for me, especially in the last number of years. Uh, my family's always been extremely important to me. But you know, when you're starting out and you're doing stuff, you, you sort of feel like that's the dues, you, you gotta keep going. Initially, it was kind of something we were used to. I would be away a lot. You know, I, you know my boys are amazing, so I, you know, and my daughter's grown up um, and living back here, uh, living now living here. Uh, my wife is so unbelievably supportive. Uh, you know, she was actually an original group. Joni was one of the original members. She danced with us till we started having kids, especially since our second son. But she's a graphic arts dis, uh, major from San Diego State. So she's always ma maintained a part of it, uh, doing our websites, and do, you know, and all the design, and all the posters and promotion. And as we first went through this whole part of our life, my family, we just like figured out, you, you know, we just like, okay, just, you know, taking things and just fighting through, you know, you know through, you know, uh, just, just not quitting, you know, praying through it, just, just going through it. Um, and then as this time has gone by, you know, you know, watching as my wife is finding out what she's enjoying about doing with the group, what part she's sort of pulling away from. I'm even looking at like with the group is how I move forward. Do I need to have, you know, real full assistance, uh, an assistant, uh, you know, people coming to interns. So I'm not hands on to every little bit. And so I don't burden my wife with everything I can't do. I love what I do, but I'm really, and, I, and, I, and I'm driven to get the message out, the inspiration out, the stories out, and to keep giving opportunities to other people, and, and to keep putting irons in the fire for these dreams that I, I have. But I'm also like, I wanna you know, you know, plan for a time with my family to go somewhere and take a real vacation. You know? It is a hard thing, but it has allowed me, it's, it's my, my family is my, uh, you know, my, give me that stable ground. Um, and it's, and the, the beauty of me acknowledging the, 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 just the beauty of my family, uh, my wife, my, uh, my kids, uh, how much they, you know, support what I do, how much, it, it just, it drives both of them because I miss them. So then I want to work harder so I can be there with them. I want to then do things that they'll be inspired by and see hard work. I believe that my kids need to learn that ethic too, of sacrifice for things, of, of you know, not growing up with an entitlement mentality that I don't want them to have. I never had it. I never really felt that someone owed me anything. Um, it's just the way that I was raised. So I want them to see that as well. Um, my my uh, my wife and I just as a couple just you know it's been 60 it'll be 17 years uh, and. You know, it's just gotten richer every year, and we're just maturing, and, and just the sense of us planning our lives together. I still perform, I still choreograph, I, I choose to perform with the Groovers when I get to, but I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be, you know, I love teaching, and but I'm so excited now to get to, also that sort of, the transitional time of my life is happening, where I get to sort of, okay, you guys go, and let me share that with people, let me put it out there. Um, my wife and I come together and, and we see, we make plans, you know, goals this year or three years or five years. Um, the Groove Blues, I, I really believe that there's a level we can uh, still attain um, where the brand will, uh, will increase so we can all benefit in a way of not having to, each of us keep doing it day and day out on our knees but say we're part of the Groove Blues and we have this project now we'd like to propose and this thing now. Um, and my own individual career, I'm just thankful for that growing as well. 